What's up, my guys? Gemma here with soaking wet hair, nonetheless. I haven't got time to dry it, so I apologise in advance. I'm back for another video. Um, today, I want to look at something pretty cool. Um, I want to compare kind of joysticks with controllers and look at some of the pros, cons, and cultural influences that both of these awesome things in our retro gaming past um, have now and how they fare by today's standards. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to show you first of all some of the joysticks that I have in my collection. So make sure you guys stick around. And then we're going to take a lo closer look um, at the Super, uh, Super Nintendo stuff and NES stuff. But I want to just say this now. It's not exclusive to the NES and the SNES. It's just kind of generic, you know, generically speaking. You know, the summary, the pros and cons will be a generic pro and con, you know, for kind of controllers and uh, joysticks right throughout. So sorry there's no Sega love, but the reason there's no Sega love is because my joy pads, uh, my joysticks are right on top of a shelf over there buried. So this was purely for easiness. So guys, stick around, let's take a look and definitely smash some of your comments below and let me know what some of your pros are and some of your cons are for using controllers and joysticks. So before we take a closer look, I just want to show you guys some of the joysticks that I have. This is the Super Advantage stick. I own two of these, a box and an unbox, and you guys can see the additional features there. That is typical with a joystick that I will talk about. Moving on, you've got the Baby Sister, the NES Advantage stick, which doesn't have as many additional features, but still has more than the basic controller, which is pretty obvious. But nonetheless, this isn't as bad or as top heavy with features compared to its um, older sister that we just just saw and the classic Sega power arcade stick this again is pretty basic it isn't too top heavy and it's reasonably ergonomic you've got a nice pad there um, a depressed pad for your left hand as you control in the uh, controller not too bad overall So straight off the bat then, I've just grabbed these purely out of easiness. Remember, this is not a kind of review of the Scoremaster. This is purely for kind of comparison purposes of a controller and a joystick. Now, personally for me, this might surprise some of you, but I actually prefer playing with the basic controller and this goes with all consoles, Mega Drive, anything, you name it, because I just find it's a hell of a lot more simpler to use. Now, what always confused me as a kid um, or features that I never actually use. So let's just go ahead and pop this here. So you guys can see on the score master, um, there is a ton, a ton of stuff on the top there that I just would not use. I just would not use. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but do you actually use the features on a joystick? I think they definitely beat controllers in terms of aesthetics because I actually think this score master looks really, really nice like the fact that this thing um, resembles a, a PAL Super Nintendo or Super Famicom and then you've got the classic controller on the side but weight is definitely a disadvantage now obviously the controller is what it is there's not a massive amount to say about this it is light it is functional it does the job very very well and this is my Super Nintendo controller that I use for all of my retro game streams here on YouTube because um, obviously with the Retron you can program this. We can program the joypad, um, sorry, the joystick as well, but you can program this for Mega Drive, etc. I just find this the most ergonomic um, and the most familiar as well. Super light, super robust, and the flex, the, the cord um, is pretty darn long. So the NES Advantage stick and the basic controller, or the classic controller, so straight off the bat you guys can see that this is nowhere near as big as the Scoremaster and it's definitely nowhere near as big as its big sister, the Super NES Advantage stick. It still packs a fair bit of weight though and I maintain in my views that I wouldn't use this for streaming because it's just too heavy and you've got to have it on your knee. In fact, this probably weighs a little bit more than the Scoremaster, um, especially around the kind of um, control area over the button area. So. Um, not as many functions, but like I said previously, you've got your basic slow motion and your turbo functions that I do not use. I would always stick to this. Now, I think this in itself is a classic, classic, classic controller. Borrows heavily from the Game and Watch D-pad and your, you just, you, you know, your B and A buttons. Not very comfortable in terms of ergonomics, but I think anything this classic 
it, it can be unergonomic because it's just that classic and I feel that this is so iconic, probably one of the most iconic symbols in gaming history. This design, this controller, you see it absolutely everywhere and it's just it's just a great controller, really, really great. Obviously there's no shoulder buttons, who needs shoulder buttons anyway? This was the 8-bit era, um, but over the two, definitely prefer this because it's, weight, it's less weighty, the cord is much longer than what it is on the um, can, on the joystick, on the advantage stick here. So definitely something to bear in mind. It depends on how you want to use your controllers, where you're going to be, if the space is big enough, then definitely, you know, I think this is great if you've got the space. This would be great for like a, a retro party with your friends, you know, something where people are coming around to the house and you want to have that awesome arcade feel. Um, and I think that's really all I have to say, guys. Um, like you guys saw, you saw the arcade power stick on the Mega Drive, a couple of advantage sticks that I've got, I've got the Master System, um, or rather the Sega control stick, but typically my opinions are the same. Classic controller wins, hands down. So, in summary, the pros of using the joystick are you get that nice arcade vibe, very nice arcade feel for those awesome arcade games such as Street Fighter 2, etc. And I did say in the video that I do prefer the looks of the joysticks. They do typically go all out and they look really, really nice. And they almost look slightly more expensive just to give you that extra little bit of a tinge of that retro gaming goodness. So, let's take a look at the cons. And those cons do include the bulk. It is not a very manoeuvrable object. It does have to sit in your lap. You can't hold it as comfortable as the controller. In with that, you've also got the weight. They're very, very heavy. Redundant features, slow-mo or turbo, depending on which way you want to use it. Not very good features for me. And with that, that includes an additional price. Be aware that if you are in the market to buy a joystick, you will be paying a hefty price, especially for some of the rarer, more box obscure joysticks. So, summarising some of the pros with the controllers, and bearing in mind this is generically, even though I only showed the NES and the Super Nintendo, it is clearly lighter, and I think that's great if you've got kids, because it's less of a hazard if they drop them, and potentially drop them on their little toes. It is cheaper, obviously. You can pick up a Super Nintendo and an NES and a Mega Drive pad for around £5. I've seen them as low as three at Expos. There's the, also the cultural influence, especially with the NES pad. After all, you don't see people walking around with NES Advantage sticks on their shoes. And also the cable that I measured is slightly longer than on all of the joysticks, so that is a bonus also. And finally, some of the cons to the controller. At times I used to notice a rattle in my Sega Mega Drive pad. It almost sounded as though there were tiny little fragments of plastic rattling around. So in a sense, I guess cheap can really mean cheap. I found that as well with some of my NES pads in the past. Luckily, none in my current collection have that problem, but it is a point to note. The second thing is that sometimes the ergonomics can feel a little bit off, particularly with the NES pad. Um, fortunately, I don't have this problem, but I know a lot of you guys out there have said that it's be quite uncomfortable to hold and I think given the fact that we're going from big bulky Xbox One pads and PlayStation 4 controllers and coming back down to NES pads it can feel a little bit off on the ergonomics from time to time. Minor details but nonetheless worth summarising. So there we go guys, like I said in that little overview I definitely prefer the controllers as there's so much more manoeuvrability and I think it's important to note that if you are a streamer definitely I think the controller You've got that manoeuvrability, there's less weight, it's just so much easier to move around and it's less of a faff on stream. I have tried actually in the past to stream on my Retron using the joystick and it's just it just doesn't work out for me. I purely think joysticks are great for that arcade vibe which was a pro that I mentioned in the summary list back there. So guys, definitely let me know your thoughts. Um, I'm back at work tomorrow so I'm actually really looking forward to getting back to a little bit of normality let's just say uh, but nonetheless I just want to thank you guys very very much for the support um, things are moving along pretty well with the channel so thank you um, I'll, there'll be some videos kind of on the screen now if you want to click these or maybe that little subscribe thing right there I'll sandwich myself in between this end slide thank you very much guys my name is Joe take care see you soon